Sony has confirmed that on the 8th of March 2019 that the PS3 and PS Vita games will not be given away as part of the PS Plus subscription service. Here's what I predict will happen. Okay, to help with the uh, video I'm doing, I'll give you a brief introduction of how they all started off. So, first of all, you had the PlayStation 1 that came out in 1995, and the main one of the main games that came out first was Destruction Derby. Brilliant game, and I really liked it. Following on from this, in the two, year 2000, the PS2 came out, um, and I was absolutely really good console. Grand Theft Auto games came out on it, with the other ones, and it was really good. Next, possibly unexpectedly, Microsoft decided to join the uh, the games console market, and in 2001 they released the original Xbox, which was a strange looking machine, just basically black with a in the shape of an X with the well X logo on the top, and the games were really good on it, you know, much better than the PS2 uh, graphics wise and you know smoothness, um, so it was kind of a bit of a sort of a kick to Sony really. Up, and, up until this point, place, uh, Sony used to release their consoles before Microsoft did, obviously, with the PS1 and PS2. However, Microsoft decided they were going to try and beat them and release the Xbox 360 in 2005. Sony sort of responded with the PSP handheld console, which I'm not going to go into in detail on here. However, in 2006, uh, Sony released the PS3. The PS3 had a, a built-in Blu-ray player, which was a real sort of like you know market leader at the time. Um, and I said to my friends that I thought the the PS the, sorry the Blu-ray would be better than Microsoft's own uh, HD DVD because one it sounded better. You know, Blu-ray sounds better than HD DVD because people can think well it's DVD, so it's probably not being as good. Whereas Blu-ray sounds better. Uh, Blu-ray stored more as well on the discs um, and. It wasn't, you know, it was built into the PS3, whereas the Xbox, you had to buy a separate device to connect to it anyway. Um, and also, the problem that the Microsoft had with the original Xbox 360s was the solder on them wasn't very good at all. So, that a lot of people had problems with them. I mean, mine was lucky enough to last seven years. It still had a few glitches, but then it eventually gave up the ghost and ended up getting one of the newer ones, which I'm not going to cover on these, uh, this video. In 2009, Sony released the PSP Go which, uh, you know, follow on from the PSP, which was released in 2005, but the problem with the PSP Go was it didn't have a disk drive in it, and the games weren't very good because uh, they were download only anyway. That's the only reason why they weren't very good. The games themselves were pretty much, you know, similar to PSP, but it really flopped because if you didn't have a connection to the network or anything, or, you know, you bought one but you didn't have the internet, you were stuffed because you couldn't really, you couldn't get any games for it because there was nothing to, you know, put them on there um, at all. In 2011, they then released the, the Vita, which was an absolutely fantastic handheld console. Later updates allowed you to control your PS4 by seeing what was on the screen on your PS Vita. So it was essentially like a secondary screen, but you can control the console using the PS Vita, which was an absolutely amazing feature. This used a Wi-Fi connection, though, so you had to have a really good connection for Wi-Fi from both to fit it to work really well. There were some streaming problems, but other than that, it was a fantastic idea. In 2013, though, the console war kind of really hit up, well, heated up between Microsoft and Sony uh, because Microsoft released the Xbox One and Sony released the PS4. Absolutely fantastic consoles, both of them in their own rights. Um, at the time, the PS4 was better with regards to games, um, but the Xbox One was catching up and it was doing some good stuff. It was a first as well. Uh, to introduce backward compatibility because PlayStation weren't, well, Sony weren't going to do that anyway. Um, and the other problem that we had with the, the PS4 was when it first came out, you couldn't even view pictures that you'd taken on, you know, on your camera or anything, or you know, by memory card if you've got a network hard drive, for example, uh, which was, you know, made the PS4 purely just more like a games console because it, that again, that only had a Blu-ray drive in it as well, um, and the Xbox One. That then has a, a Blu-ray drive in it, um, so you know the the difference between the two. You know the PS3 previously was better than the Xbox 360, but the the you know the the connection between the two, the Xbox and the PS4, mm -hmm. sorry the Xbox One and the PS4 was very getting a lot closer in regards to the quality of the games and everything else. Now this is where the part gets really interesting, okay? And this is my whole point for this video, okay? Um, you know, 2016, the P the PS4 Pro came out, fantastic console, 
but Microsoft played a blinder. They released the Xbox One X and the games on, you know, they've got quite a few games for it. Backward compatibility as well. They released that, uh, introduced that on the Xbox One X, well, part of the Xbox One as well. Um, and Sony, I'm not aware they've done any backward compatibility things yet anyway. But, you know, with quite a few games, if you've already got the disc, you put it in the Xbox and it downloads the update for it. Um, on so you can play it on the Xbox One X, and then jobs good. I mean, one for example is Fight Night Champion. Um, that is a fantastic game on its own right, anyway. And then you know, second hand, it was about five pounds in the second hand shops. And as soon as they released uh, the backward compatibility, the price was selling for shot up to fifteen pounds, um, which was incre incredible, really, when you think about you know the the difference in the, the two the consoles. Uh, however, coming back to my point before, um, this is where it gets interesting regarding what I predict for the future with regards online gaming and the backward compatibility and the free games that you get with both consoles if you have the subscription to them. So the PS, the PlayStation is called the PS Plus um, and that retails at forty nine ninety nine. However, as in the beginning of this video, um, on the 8th of March next year, Sony are not going to be doing the PS. Oh, sorry, they're not going to be uploading any games for backward compatibility or for the PS3 or the PlayStation Vita. It's just going to be purely PS4. Now, one of the issues I can think of with that is the fact that there's is there going to be enough games for them to do that anyway? Um, and secondly, are you going to feel that you're being a bit, bit ripped off paying fifty pounds just to get a free game every month? The reason for that is because Microsoft on Xbox Live, which obviously it's got to be Xbox Live Gold, um, you know, that's thirty nine ninety nine. So it's ten pounds cheaper. You get two Xbox One games per month. You get or well, you used to get two Xbox three sixty backward compatibility games as well, but they are now starting to do the Xbox uh, original Xbox games as backward compatibility now as well. Um, but again it's still cheaper now you can get the games a bit cheaper from other places online if you need you know uh, I'm not going to advertise them here you know but you know usually you can save round about between you know about 10 pound on average um, and that is definitely worth considering so my prediction is going to be that I think that a lot of people are going to lose interest in the PS4 anyway because of the um, the issues obviously with PS Plus and I think a lot more people are going to be joining on the, Mac, uh, the Xbox bandwagon and Xbox Live Gold is going to take off a lot more popular and that's it. I found the flood. Anybody there?